So if you are logging in for the first time, my name is Adam Fry. My title is Shihan. Uh, I'm the head instructor for Wasan Shitan Dojo, and we will be working on the two temple karate today. Uh, today is also just a little bit of a primer, uh, like we talked about last time. We're going to work on kicks. So right now, before we get started, make sure you have enough space to kick, to make sure that you have enough space to move your legs around. You will probably need a little bit more room than you think in order to feel comfortable. Um, so. Double check that right now, and we'll go from there. All right, everybody, are we ready? All right, kiss, kick. All right, pulse. Terminate. All right, pulse. All right, let's get warmed up. Knees up. we work on kicks today don't be afraid to flip your camera or look to look at yourself while you're doing it because once again I've talked about this a couple times this is a great opportunity to see yourself doing technique it's a huge huge help any jumping jacks everybody ready Hajime. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Five, two, three, four. Six, two, three, four. Seven, two, three, four. Eight, two, three, four. Nine, two, three, four. Ten, two, three, four. Eleven, two, three, four. Twelve, two, three, four. Thirteen, two, three, four. Fourteen, two, three, four. Fifteen, two, three, four. Sixteen, two, three, four. Seventeen, two, three, four. Eighteen, two, three, four. Nineteen, two, three, four. Twenty, two, three, stop. Push up. Are they only time I can do that? All right. Here we go. Push up position. Each. Me. San. She. Go. Rook. Sechi. Hachi. Kill. Jip. Hey. <coughs> We're going to do the knee up squats today. Work on a balance a little bit. So get your feet slightly away on the shoulders and start with your left leg. Right now, each. Oh, hold balance. Knee. Son. Oh. Knee. Sechi. Hachi. Kyo. Jip. And down. Hug. Hands in the waist, hip circles. Mm. Other way. Mm. 
Is there an ease? Like the other way? Right, jet skate. Do it. Stepping up with your left leg into stays on stance. Hush. Leg raises. Better make sure our legs are nice and warmed up because like I so said, we're going to be doing kicks today. Beach. Knee. Song. Cheek. Go. Rook. Say a cheek. Hanchi. Kill. Jill. Hey. Foot change. Each. Knee. Song. Cheek. Go. Rook. Say a cheek. Hachi. Q. Jeff. Hi. Yes. Move yourself around if you need to. I need to back up. Exercise number one stepping off your right leg, left hand single key iron for a single. Hut. Hi. Knee. Son. She. Go. Work. Say a chi. Hachi. Q. Jeff. Hi. Double. Each. Ni, san, chi, go, ro, se chi, ha chi, kyo, jo, hai, rising, each, ni, san, chi, go, ro, se chi, ha chi, kyo, jo, hai, combination, each, ni, san, chi, Go. Rock. Say chi. Ha chi. Kill. Jet. Hey. It's a block punch. Each. Knee. Song. She. Go. Rock. Say chi. Ha chi. Kill. Jet. Hey. Side. Each. Knee. Song. She. Go. Rook. Say chi. Ha chi. Kill. Jeff. Hi. Block punch punch. Each. Knee. Song. She. Go. Rook. Say chi. Ha chi. Kill. Jeff, hi, side each, knee, song, she, go, rook, say chi, ha chi, kill, Jeff, hi, high low punching, each, knee, song, she, go, Rook, say chi, ha chi, kill, jeff, hi, in the middle of each, ni, song, chi, go, rook, say chi, ha chi, kill, jeff, hi, crossings, each, ni, song, she go rock say chi ha chi kill jab hey no mess press get get and red when you're doing exercise one since we just went over all of that the past couple classes make sure you're thinking about some of those things you don't have to think about all of them I'm not expecting perfection. I'm not expecting to do three classes and then everybody can hold inside their head absolutely everything I talk about. But remember, 1% better is still better. If you remember one thing out of that, 
pick it, hold on to it, try to improve it as you're working on exercise one instead of every class. All right, so today we're going to work on kicks. I'm going to talk a bit about kicks, the three, we're going to work on all three kicks today. So if you know all three, great. If you don't, you get to learn them. If you don't know all three kicks, if you don't know any of the kicks, focus on the things that make all the kicks the same and work on that beginning part. Because all of our kicks start the same. Now, I've talked about this part about kicks a lot, and I'm going to do it again. But I want everybody, here's a little bit of something you can do on your own and just kind of feel it. All right? I want everybody to put your hands in jars. Goodness sakes, on stance. That should be a super good one. I want you to take whichever hand is your main hand, whichever hand you write with. And I want you to just put it out in a straight punch on my key up. Everybody ready? Hey! Right? Pretty quick. Now, I want everybody to just get your leg out there. I don't care which kick. Just get it out there on my key up. All right, put your hands back in guard. Hi. Right. All right. Now, what you should have noticed, and when I was watching the screen, it was true with everybody. To go from here to full extension is much faster than to kick, even if we're kicking low, because we have to shift and get to that balance point before we can do anything else. Even though my punch starts with my feet. I can start the movement right away, and the wind, like the wave, will come out and strike out as you do that. Thus, it's much, much faster. Talk about this a lot with kicks. Kicks are not fast techniques. They can be quicker than they were before. They can be quicker than other people. They can be quick compared to almost anybody else. Heck, some of you have got really fast kicks. Your kicks might be almost as fast as some people's ability to punch. However, it, no matter who you are, you will be able to use hand techniques much faster than you can use a kick. Now, I also want to talk about the box, the semi sin where you want to hit on a kick. So, you can come in the frame once here. Face, uh, face the camera. If I'm striking Ethan, a lot of, we've talked about your center line there, almost all of my targets are up and down off his center line. The good spots to hit are there. I can reach all of them quite easily with my hand, with really no change in speed. If my hand is here, it's not gonna really take a whole lot of difference to strike his chin as opposed to strike through his belly button. It's almost the same speed. For kicks, it's a lot harder to turn and face me, but back up just a bit so I'm kicking. Good. If I'm trying to kick any of those points, kicking his groin is actually, I want you to pay attention, a quick groin kick versus kick to the face. It's a couple milliseconds slower to kick him in the face. It's a little more obvious. Kicks are just slower. They have more distance to travel. They require more biomechanics. The kicks have a very have lots of very good purposes. And the thing I want you to think about this with kicks, this was one of the best ways I heard it described. You don't use a kick when you need to use a punch, just like you wouldn't grab a hammer if you have to screw in a screw. They serve different purposes. One big underutilized example of kicks is if you're clinched up, if you're grappling. So come in here. If we're locked up, and he's got, he's got me tied up. I can't really hit him with my arms. But I have kicks. I got all kinds of kicks. Why? Because I can actually lean on him to support myself and pick this foot up with almost no loss of balance. He's feeling it. He's supporting all my weight right now. It's tiring him out. So I can pick this foot up and just kick out that knee while I'm at it or even just batter his legs. That's another great example for a kick. The other is if he's being reckless and charging in, I have that time because he's committed, he's coming in. And I can throw that kick up there and use it. Now, and if he doesn't know what he's doing and he tries to like reach in and scoop up my legs, kicks are great because I'm gonna hit him. 
because he's bending into the kick. Now, that's a little playing with fire a bit, because if he does know what he's doing, he's going to catch the kick, and then I really am going to end up on my butt. Kicks have range. Kicks can be used when your hands can't be, and kicks have more power. When we practice kicking, you always want to practice kicking as high as you can. Why? Because it's the same biomechanics, whether it's up high versus down low. In a life protection situation, it is a rare instance when you're ever going to want to kick above your belt. It puts you too off balance. It's a little too risky. I'm not saying never, especially because all my black belts out there, you guys know, the rules are really meant to be broken. But the general, you, it will be rare. You do it very deliberately. For everybody else who's lower than a black belt, I don't want you to ever really consider throwing a kick above the waist. All right? You're more likely to end up on the wrong end of that. So let's practice that front kick. So everybody gets kick. Your stepping out with your left leg into say some stance. All right? So remember, front leg is bent, back leg is straight. Both feet are pointed forward. Our weight is mostly on this foot. When we're punching, I talked about how that lets us lean without having to lean because our weight is already forward. When we're kicking, that's, it's more efficient to kick out of a Saison stance because if I'm kicking with my back leg, my weight's already mostly up here. So the amount of weight transfer I have to do is minimal. I don't have to do like if I'm standing flush, everybody just stand normal. If your weight's 50-50, I have to move all of it over before I can throw this kick out. If I'm in a Saison stance, I can just kick because my weight's already forward. I'm putting more of it forward. It's all part of the natural progression of the kick. All right. I talk about this every time. I'm going to talk about it again. Whenever we're throwing a kick, knee up first off. And notice this knee is, doesn't come up like this. It doesn't even come up like this. It swoops just a little by the other knee. That's to cover your groin. If you've ever been hitting the groin, I don't care if you're a boy or a girl, it hurts a lot. So don't let yourself get hit in the groin if you can help it. We're covering, just like when we do our covers or our punches, we're defending while we're attacking. Same thing, this is my defense while I'm attacking. So go ahead, knee up, let's put it back. I want everybody to really pay attention to that weight, how the weight shifts while you throw those knees. All right, so go ahead, knee up, and back. Knee up, and back. Knee up, and back. Keep those shoulders over your hips best you can. With kicking, one of the number one things people like to do, they like to crunch in. They like to, because it feels like they're kicking really hard, like pushing their body in, and you're actually taking power away. By keeping your torso relaxed, and actually it's almost better to push your hips forward than it is to crunch them back. Because pay attention, if, let's all everybody do a bad knee. I want you to pull that knee in and I want you to crunch. I want you to pay attention to your shoulders over your hips. Your hips go backwards. Well, if my energy is going forward, if I'm kicking Ethan, and I want everything to go that way, if I pull my hips back by crunching in like that, that's that much force that is not going into him, but coming back into me. So, good say some stance, left foot forward. All right, now we're gonna do that kick. While you're learning, this is why I said make sure you have plenty of room. Okay. Extend that kick out. I always call it stomping the kick. All right, now, if you can, right now, look at yourself in your camera. Because what a lot of you are gonna see is you're gonna do this, and there's no kick because you're too worried about stomping it out. I don't want you to retract it, I want it to come out. You should see in your camera the bottom of your foot. All right, right now we're striking with the ball of our foot, this part of our foot. Throw your toes back and kick. All right, everybody ready? Each. You should have seen the bottom of your foot. Knee. Thumb. Sheep. Oh, rope, sitchi, achi, 
to turn sideways to your camera if you can. If you don't have the space, it's okay. Don't worry about too much. But normally I say, make sure you're looking straight ahead. I want you to watch yourself in the camera. You're going to see some things you didn't realize. This is the great part about training with a mirror or a camera. All right, I don't care which leg is forward at this point. So just go wherever you can. Yeah, everybody can see me. All right. And the guard, front kick, each, knee, song, chief, iron, oh, hook, say chief, hachi, you. Other side. Because I'm probably doing the same thing and I tell you guys to do. Each. Knee. Top. Sheep. Go. Rock. Say cheap. moving them so make sure if you need to take a moment see like Lincoln's doing a little bit of this that's a good idea get the blood flow back into them oh, got back out and cut my own head off how many of you I can see most of you how many of you when you were doing kicks when you looked sideways realize you were not kicking as high as you thought how many people realize they were not bringing their knee up as much as they thought those are the two common things people don't realize until they see themselves. It's okay. If that's what happened to you, it's okay. Uh, hand up, is that a question or is that acknowledging? Uh, no. Question. I think she's got a question. Got a question? Claire, uh, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, but like sometimes since we're not in the dojo, like you can't kick as high because of like stuff around you. Yes. But yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if you're not kicking as high or as far as you normally can because you don't want to break something, that's not what I'm talking about. That's A-OK. -okay. Yeah. Be aware of your surroundings. That's situational awareness. That's the difference between being in a dojo versus being in your living room or a kitchen or bedrooms. I think that's what I see so far. So all of those kicks, like even when I was doing it, I noticed, I'm like, huh, I thought I was kicking a little higher than I was. And I actually changed it a little bit. I caught myself pulling my hips back a little bit on a few of those kicks. Super common mistakes, very easy to do. Don't beat yourself up about them. Just acknowledge that it happened and work on fixing it. That's the karate way. All right, now I'm going to talk about that front kick a bit and some of the applications. If I am doing that front kick and I kick straight up, for example, if I'm engaged with Ethan, and he's down and he's got his legs too far apart, and I go right for his groin, right up the middle. Is that a front kick? Yeah, absolutely. Let's say, though, we're clinched up, and I want to take his leg out. So 
So I push and I kick sideways. So my foot turns more because I'm trying to strike his knee. Is that a front kick? I can see a lot of you. If you think it's front kick, raise your hand so I can see. Yeah, it's still a front kick. Just like if I throw a straight punch and I throw it to his face, that's just the same as if I throw a straight punch to his body. They're not different just because they have a different target. My hand, if I'm super close and I throw a straight punch to his face and I don't get a full rotation, that doesn't mean it's not a straight punch. It's the same thing. Why? Why is it the same thing? I want to see a hand and we'll get people, get people talking a little bit because we can't. Who think, why is it the same thing? What makes a front kicker front kick? Who's got an idea? Graham, go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and yell it out. You kick in front of you. Right! It's the kick that goes in front of you. That's what makes a front kick a front kick. Because as far as my body is concerned, whether I kick up like that, sideways like this, throw a knee first and then kick, my body doesn't care. You move the same muscle groups. The only thing that changes are some of the little tiny muscles that guide it. That's all that changes. I am generating forward energy from my leg. That's a front kick. It's just like in Miyuku Kempo, you know, in boxing they say this is a jab, this is a cross. Why? One is with my left hand and it's quick. The other, it goes across my body and goes forward. We say, eh, do the same thing. I may have a different application with a quick lead hand, but that doesn't matter if it's right or left. I might have a big heavy punch, but that makes it a totemé, whether it's right or left. Just like a front kick is a front kick is a front kick. I had to check to make sure I didn't in my head. A front kick is a front kick is a front kick, just like a straight punch is a straight punch is a straight punch. So with that in mind, I'm, this is why we're going to talk about all the kicks today. We're going to move on to side kick. What makes a side kick a side kick? Come on, somebody raise your hand. Tell me. Somebody knock. Silas, go ahead. What makes? Are you muted? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Even on, what makes a. Here, here we go. There you go. What makes a sidekick a sidekick? What do you think? Oh, you did again. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Yeah. I'm not able to hear you, so. It's, I can't unmute on my. Oh, no worries about it, buddy. I'm going to assume you had it right because you usually get these things right. So. For whatever reason, some, we're having some problems here, and it's on our end. So a side kick, front kicks to the front, side kick is to the side. That's the difference that's in the name. A front kick is to the front, side kick is to the side. So I want everybody, we're going to do a little different than how we used to do it. Instead of getting in a Naihachi stance for side kick, we're going to throw them from a Saison stance. So, everybody go ahead, step left foot forward, say something. So, if I'm throwing a side kick, this knee comes up, right? At this point, if you know side kick, is this any different than if I'm in an Aihachi stance? No, it's not. I can throw that, boom, sideways. Why? Because a side kick is to the side. So, we're going to practice doing side kicks like that. Instead of a Naihachi, we're going to throw them in say something, back leg, but we're going to go to the side. So everybody knee up. Yep, let's stagger. <laughs> so Ethan and I don't look each other. Hold on, we need to shift. Knee up to the side. Knee up, side. When you kick with a side kick, you want to hit with your heel. You want to hit and thrust that heel like you're stomping on something with your heel, but it's up in the side. If you are want, if you can be real careful. Actually, no, I don't want parents yelling at me for accidentally putting holes in drywall. I'm going to show you, if you think about it, it's just like you're stepping on the wall. 
So, yep, there we go. Boom. The stomp on it. Big common mistake is people want to look. And I don't know if you can see my foot, but when I try to look square at it, what happens to my foot? It points up. That's not like we're stomping on something. That's turning it into more of a front kick because I'm facing that way. You almost are looking over your shoulder on side kicks. So here you can. This way, all right. So again, left foot forward, say on stance. I'm gonna be kicking the back so you can see what I'm talking about a little more. Side kicks, knee up and out. Go ahead and fall through. Each knee. Son. Keep. That was a bad one. Go. That was Rook. Say chi. Touchy. See, I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm not turned. I'm turned this way. Two. Two. Hey. Hey. Nice. Same thing. Each. Knee. Tom. Knee. Oh. Work. Say chi. Achi. See. Not turn towards it. Two. Shake out your legs. Shake them out. Give them a little stretch. Do what you need to do. So, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the last kick, the kick that gives people the most trouble. It's the most martial arty kick. If you watch kickboxing or MMA, you see this kick a lot. It's the round kick. Now, what makes a round kick? A round kick. Abby, go ahead. It goes around. It comes around, exactly. It comes around your body. Now, efficiency proficiency says that if I'm kicking with my right leg, which side does the kick come around on? The right side. Because if I'm trying to kick around this way, can I do it? Yeah, I just did it. It with my heel. Other kicks, other martial arts call that a wheel kick. The problem with wheel kicks is they're slow. Even slower than other kicks. So if I'm going to take my time to learn a kick, I'm not going to take the time to learn a wheel kick because I'm probably not going to use it too often. Personally, I've never been in a situation where I could throw a wheel kick and I couldn't throw one of the other basic kicks instead and get the same result. So, round kicks come round. I want you to think. I want everybody to take your hand. I want you to say with me, front kicks go front, push your hand out. Front kicks go front. Side kicks go sideways. Side kicks go sideways. You can push your arm out and do it that way. Round kicks come around. Now, notice I didn't do this. I came around like that. I came from here and came around. That's the technique, just like an inside, that you want to do with your round kick. You don't want to make a big and super. You can get a lot of power doing this. Trust me, I've done that before. And for my black belts, sometimes that might be what you want. But for everybody else, while you're learning round kick, you want to keep them tight and quick. So everybody go ahead and get in the Saison stance, left foot forward. 
It's going to start the same way as a front kick and a side kick. That's so they don't know what kick I'm doing. They don't know until the last second because kicks are big. They're obvious. So I want to make them as least obvious as possible, as sneaky as possible. But then once I get this knee up here, or as I get this knee up here, you're going to twist your hip. Okay? So what I want everybody to practice is get the knee up with the hip twist. Okay? So get the knee up, hip twist. Put it down. Get the knee up, hip twist. Back down. Knee up, hip twist. Good. Knee up, hip twist. Now we're going to do that knee up, hip twist at the same time. Okay? So it's not going to be two steps, so you're going to do it all at once, all right? Knee twist. And make sure it comes up as you twist. So one thing you can do if you're having trouble with it is if you, with your right leg, put your left hand out and give yourself a knee five. Okay? Because if you put your hand here, that's making sure it's coming up and around. Because if I just do this, I'm missing my hand. Smack your hand with your knees. And it's okay if you fall right now. This is a super awkward motion. The kick makes it less awkward. Let's go ahead and up and twist. Back down. Up and twist. Back down. Up and twist. Back down. All right, now we're going to add the kick. We're going to use our right leg. I want everybody to go ahead and lift your knee up and grab your shin. Okay? That's what you're hitting with. You want to hit with your shin. I, a lot of you have asked me because you hit your shin on something and it's like, oh my gosh, that hurts so much. One, it hurts because of how our brains don't want you to trip. So they give us extra information when you're calm. When you're riled up, it doesn't hurt nearly as much. You'll be bruised later. Two, you can actually condition your shin to stop hurting. My shin doesn't hurt nearly that bad when I hit it on things anymore because I've kicked heavy bags thousands of times with it. So, we're kicking with our shin. What we're going to do is we're going to do that knee up thing. But as we do that, we're going to let our leg come out. So it's going to cut. Or like I've also described it like swinging a bag baseball bat. All right? So everybody say some stance, left foot forward. Round kick. Each. Knee. Thumb. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Fight. Yeah. All right, switch feet. We're going to do the knee and twist. We're not going to do the knee up. We're going to do the knee and twist first. So put your hand out if it helped you. If not, don't worry about it. Knee and twist. 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 One more. Knee and twist. All right. Good say, son. Okay. Let's get over to our next one. Keep him. Each. Knee. Oh. 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 Take your legs out. Doing lots of leg work. So now with round kicks, something to keep in mind. Actually, can you hand me the water? Yeah. Need a drink. Talking about. Thank you. Yep. So we were talking about the center line. We're talking about that's where a lot of the important things to hit are. With a round kick, let's say I do strike above the waist. And one thing also to keep in mind about that, for the, those of you when you get taller, don't kick above your waist. 
one good thing to show is my waist is much higher on Ethan. So it's much safer for me, for me to throw those kicks because I can control it more and it's harder for him to grab. Something to keep in mind if you're taller. But for those round kicks, they're coming from the side. But if my targets are in the middle, well, how do I make that work? You have to think about the point. When you saw me throwing those kicks, it was over here, right? That's where I ended. I didn't end here. I ended all the way through. You want to kick through your opponent's body. You don't want to kick against the edges. If I'm kicking a round kick to whether even if it's his knees, I'm not going to try to kick. I was put your leg forward. I'm not going to kick right here and pull it back. I'm not. I'm just looking at the camera. Yet. I'm going to kick here. I'm going to kick all the way through his knee. I'm going to kick through the center of his body with that leg with that kick. Not a quick little tap. It's not going to do anything. It might be painful. It might not. Especially if I miss his knee and I hit his thigh instead. If you got somebody like Ethan here who's got beefy thighs, let me tell you this. I can kick his thigh all day long. He'll have a bruise. He'll be unhappy the next day, but it's not going to stop him in the slice. It's not even going to slow him down. Unless I really like the 20 minutes paced that leg over and over and over and over. I drive through, even if I hit his upper thigh, and I drive it through, look what that did to his body. It turned him around. Yeah. What was that? It turned him around. It turned him around, exactly. If I drive through, I now have his back with a kick. And he's, all, all the students have been with me a while now. Once you get somebody's back, it's game over for them. Doesn't take too many elbows to the back of the head to just end that real quick. Or you've got chokes, or you can spike them into the ground, all kinds of stuff. Which is why we don't do, um, we, we don't let people get to the back in Bogu. Right. One of the reasons why we don't let people get to the back in Bogu. That's one thing that, like, I, as a lot of you know, I love watching UFC, I love watching mixed martial arts. But, and for safety purposes, they don't allow strikes to the back of the head or the back of the spine, which makes sense. But every time I see somebody take somebody's back in a UFC fight, I always think to myself, in a life protection situation, that fight is done. That person is not getting back up. So, with the kicks, drive through with them. Doesn't matter what kick it is. Drive through, hit that center bit. If I'm front kicking, if I'm front kicking, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Ready? I'm doing that. If I'm side kicking, I'm not doing that. I'm doing that. I'm driving through. And then round kick, do it this way. You're going to see him from behind. You can watch. Like I said, you don't see the front. I want everybody to watch Ethan's back here. And I'm not going to pace him. But even this, <laughs> you see it. <laughs> Boom. You move out. If you drive through, that wasn't even a full power kick, and it gets through. This is. So this is why you want kicks. Same thing even if it's, I'm big. Which is your better round kick? Right. Right leg? So this way. Right? That's your right. So go ahead and give, give, go ahead and lay, lay down. You can see, I, I don't weigh him by about 100 pounds. Go ahead and lay it up. It's not going to be backwards. A good kick will do that. Any questions on kicks? Throw a hand up, unmute yourself, chat it out if the camera's not on. I see a grand. Go ahead. So if you're doing like bogey, you don't hit their back or the back of their head, but like for this situation, you definitely want to get that. Yep. That's one thing I wish we could do safely in bogey 
is ways where if you took the back you won. But there's no safe way to know did you actually get the back or did you have an opportunity you couldn't really take. I wish we could. If we ever get super functional VR, that'll be great. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, good. All right. Dojo Kun time. Dojo Kun number four to develop a respectful attitude. If there is a time right now where we need respect in our world, it's this. Respect, I've said this before, I'll say it again, and I'm going to also add to it a bit. Respect is treating somebody else how you would want to be treated in their situation. What happens if we don't know exactly what their situation is? How are we respectful? Well, we assume it's worst case. A big example is right now a lot of people are wearing masks out because of the coronavirus. If you've heard the science about it, you know that unless you get a super high end mask, if all I do is put a bandana on my face, it's not stopping the coronavirus coming into me. It's just not. But you know what it is doing? If I have it and I don't know it, it's stopping it from spreading out in front of me. So that's a respect thing. If you saw somebody and you didn't know if they had the coronavirus or not, and they were coughing on people and go and doing all that, you would be like, that's not cool. So you put the mask on yourself so that way you're limiting what you're doing. You may be fine. You may know you're fine. But not everybody you come across is going to know that. So it's respectful, put on the mask. Stay home, that's another respect thing. When you're in the house, think about what the other people would like. We're in our houses a lot more right now. Houses are getting messy. We need, we need to all pitch in and clean. I'm guilty of it too. I don't clean that much, I need to clean more because we're all stuck in here together. And it doesn't matter if I'm like, well, that's fine. Uh, that mess doesn't bother me. If there was a mess that bothered me and not somebody else, would I want them to clean it up, clean up after themselves? I would. So the respectful thing is to clean up. And this also goes way back to that when I was talking about grace and how everybody's a little stressed out, a little more tense, a little quicker to anger, a little quicker to fear. Respect is acknowledging that in giving people forgiveness and grace for that. Somebody snaps at you a little bit, it's respectful to go, all right, they're probably just a little stressed, I'm just gonna let it go. And if you catch yourself doing it, and it's gonna happen, we're all human. The respectful thing is to later be like, I came across a little hard, or I didn't mean to be mean like that. And apologize, even if you don't feel like you really did anything wrong. That's all respect. And it's all dealing within this close area in this time when we're afraid. And just like you're training right now, remember how I said, key eye if you can. Talk to the people in your house. Maybe they don't want you yelling. And you can key eye quietly to yourself. I, I couldn't hear that through the microphone, but I key eye really quietly. That's all respect. Think about the other people that you're interacting with. Think about if you were them, how would you want to be treated? and then do that. That's one of the big reasons why it's develop. Because I don't, I live with Ethan and I don't know everything he would think about off the top of my head. So sometimes I have to stop and I have to think about it. What would Ethan think is respectful? It may not come natural to you to me. And then once I've thought about it, then I do it. Respectful attitude. All right, let's go ahead and bow out. Everybody gets scared. All right. Shomani. All right. Karate no Michi. Karate no Michi. And all of you. All right. Kun ban wa. Good to see you all again. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Question. Question. Oh, question. Yes.
basically what you were saying before is that some things can affect others, mm -hmm. but not yourself. Right. Yeah. So, so like a messy room in one place. So someone could be bothered by it, but someone else couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. Even if it's your room, that's actually a really good point. It's your room. Maybe it bothers your parents. Should you clean it up this time, right now? Probably, I would just say, yeah, clean it up. If, if you really want it messy for some reason, maybe have a conversation about it with them, about why you want it messy. And be honest with yourself. And this goes back to keep an honest and sincere way. If your room's messy and it bothers your parents, but it doesn't bother you, and you want it messy, ask yourself, why do you want it messy? Is it because you just don't want to clean it? Or is there a good reason? If the answer is you just don't want to clean it and you're being honest with yourself, you probably should clean it because that's being respectful back to them. And for the kids, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, like, we're going to do laundry, we got to, and Ethan's not around, we got to go into his room to get his dirty laundry. So if he keeps his room too messy, it's hard for us to be like, is this dirty, is this clean? So him, he, and he keeps a fairly, he keeps a good room. I'm not, I'm not pulling him out. I'm not doing anything like that. But I was just using that as an example. So if it doesn't affect anybody else and it bothers them and you have a good reason, the respectful thing to do is flip it around. Would you want them to talk to you about it? Probably. Have an honest conversation, an honest and sincere conversation with them. So that's a good, that's a great question actually. So, cause I know I'm, I'm a messy person. So that's why I always talk about messes because I'm messy. And I know it. Good question, Graham. Good question. Yep. Is that a question or is that a wave by, Claire? Waving. Waving. All right. Jane. There you go. Good question. Bye. 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 Bye.